Hey Misfits, Karen here to let you know that this year for Giving Tuesday, we are again partnered with Tikva Hands of Hope. For the month of November, all Patreon and Cash App support will go directly to Tikva to help support the work they are doing, sharing the love of Jesus and message of hope with the kids here in Canton, Ohio. If you've been on the fence about becoming a Patreon member, now is the best time to do it. Go to patreon.com slash ministry misfits to sign up now. Not only will your money go to support the amazing work happening with Tikva, but you also receive all the bonus benefits of joining the Patreon community. It's the Misfits. Hey everybody, welcome to Mr. Misfits. We're back, it's just us again. Yep. We're in studio, we think we have the audio issues from last week figured out. It's, Joe, it's always something new, you just never know yeah. what's going to well, happen. It, it was not just us, we, we discovered it was not us at all actually. We can actually blame it fully on our on our guests. Joe, Joe was having some microphone issues. If you listen, if you listen to Buddy Walk, or if you tuned in, you, the, to uh, Friday when I was on Kingdom on the Road with them live, pretty much the same issues were happening there. Although Ant sounded really cool because he sounded like when anybody tries to do like a divine voice, it had that like that deep echo to the it. Deep echo, yeah, it was. It sounded really cool. Although we <laughs> thought we had it fixed and did not, but at least for today, Misfits is fixed. We're good to go. <laughs> yep. So you know, a couple announcements real quick. It's November now. I guess it was actually technically November when we released last week. Yep, that would have been the first day. Yeah, but we, month. you know, we don't ever know what day it's it is. It's flying by. I'm, I'm confused. Yeah, we never know what day it is. Anyway, it's November. So just like last year and just like every year for the past like 30 or 40 years, November 20 or the first Tuesday after Thanksgiving. So you just realize it's never the same day every year the tuesday after thanksgiving is giving tuesday where um you're supposed to be giving money to your nonprofits that you support and everything like that so this year again what we are doing within misfits is that we are taking all of the new patreon money any new cash app donations for the month of november and they are going to tikva and you still have the option regardless of that to be able to go through and get any of the Tikva gear, the Here Come the Misfits stuff that the money goes to Tikva as well. But for the month of November, if you want to join join Patreon and just haven't yet, now's the time to do it because all of the Tikva, all of the money from Patreon this month is going to Tikva as well. Yep. And just as a reminder for people that may not have heard from past episodes or listen all the way to the end, Tikva is a local nonprofit here based in Canton, Ohio, and they work with anywhere from first graders up to high schoolers as an after school program uh, for kids in the city, provide them a meal, help them with homework. They get to learn about Jesus and who they're created in and through their purpose. A really great organization uh, that Andrew and I have been able to be a part of and all of you as well. Yeah, so if you want to find out more about them, tikva.org, or you can go to our website and um, go to Rob Elder's uh, bio in the in the uh, guest portfolios and everything like that. Um, also, for those of you that don't watch this on YouTube, if you have not been to YouTube recently, and this is also just a warning for anybody that runs a YouTube channel that has not checked any of their emails in the past like six months from YouTube, YouTube is changing. YouTube has some new features. We're going to talk more about it at the end, but just if you haven't gone to YouTube in a while, go to the Ministry Misfits YouTube channel and, and check out what's going on there as well. But today, we're going to start with a poll that we, we put out, and we got some interesting results. 
Yeah, I, I was scrolling through to see some of them, so I, I'm curious to hear how the final results were tallied. Yeah, so we put this poll out on Reddit, which did nothing because everybody just started talking about something completely different in the in the thread. So it did what it was supposed to. On pretty Reddit. pretty much, and then but it was also on Twitter, it was on Facebook, it was on Instagram, and what we got what the what it was was we asked the question of what is it that the church is actually called to be. Are we called to be set apart? Are we called to be separate? Or are those actually the same thing? And then because we, you know, we're the misfits, we have to add one of, we also gave you the option to just be honest about the fact that you thought you knew and now you're just confused. Because so I think you that, never had to think about this before. I think that got a couple, right? That, that actually didn't do too bad. So set apart got 72% of the vote. Pretty much guaranteed it won. Now, the fun thing, though, was that there were different, in some of the different comments, people were defining it differently as far as what that actually meant. Separate only got 2%. But even there in the comments, we had some different definitions of what that actually means. Mm Mm-hmm. 13% 13% said it was the same thing or that it was so similar they couldn't really tell, so they were going with same thing. And then 13% also was like, I have no idea anymore because I thought it was something else, but since you guys are asking, I'm probably wrong. But now they know how I feel on a daily yeah. basis when Andrew <laughs> asks me questions of, but all right, this is a trick question. L- luckily, they didn't get dinged as they Yeah, as there they was no buzzer. Response. There was no buzzer when you hit confusion. If I could have, If I could have hooked that up, I would have. Now, we are now going to spend today's episode, though, actually walking through all of these things to determine which actually is the correct one and why. So the first thing we need to discover is what is the actual difference between being separate and being set apart? So, Brandon, let's go to you first and ask you what is the difference between being separate and set apart i'm going to start with the set apart which would be typically someone or something um being selected or removed or put aside for a specific purpose okay that's close is what i would say for set apart then what's separate Separate, I feel like this is the more challenging one to come up with a definition for some reason of opposites. I don't know. No, it's not. I wouldn't say opposites because that's just differences, I guess I'll say. So what I had put down was when you are separate to separate something, you take something out. And then you create something new and untouched over here. It's a whole new category, right? That you've been separated out from the rest. And now you are your own thing over here. To be set apart is to take something out, designate it as something different, but then put it back, right? Like if we're talking playing, if we're talking, you know, cards Mm. and we mark the cards, we the cards are still within the, the deck, whole deck yeah but we know which ones are which because they've been set apart from the others if we take those cards and we put them in their own deck it doesn't help us at all with what we've got on the table and now you're looking at me like remind me never to play cards with him <laughs> they're probably stacked i don't know how to actually how to actually stack or mark the decks because we both know that i would confuse myself with what i marked now if that's the case then we have to ask the question of which is actually the correct biblical model and so I went through and pulled out two or three words because this is part of the problem. Like you said, it's very hard to define these things. Yeah. And so that's why I think probably most people in the poll were like, now I'm confused. All right. I know how much (laughs) Andrew likes to throw trick questions in there. Maybe both. (laughs) So, you know, this is what 
what I did was I went through and if you actually just search in like Bible Hub, Bible Gateway, Logos, you know, Blue Blue Letter Bible, any of those major major plat softwares that are both concordances and dictionaries and Bibles and they hold multiple translations and you can do cross searches and all those fun fun research level things. If you search the word set apart or search the word separate, you get a ton of different options for what you actually mean. Because there is no real, this is what the word we get this from is. That's part of the reason why we can't just go to Webster's for a, a definition. Yeah, it more and so I, gives different countries and stuff being separated right? versus a full verse of, you are called to be set apart. Yes. Or so separate. In the old... So within the Hebrew, the main one for what we normally would talk about being set apart is the word kadosh, which is to make holy or to consecrate, to set apart as holy. You have badal, which is literally to separate. But specifically, it's talking about division and separation in terms of like creation. So God separated the light from the dark. There, that would be badal. God separated out different things within the law as holy. It wasn't consecrated. It was they were just separate. So the the dietary laws, mm. the Levites specifically, were separate from the rest of Israel. They had their own codes and laws that were completely different. And then you have Pilah, which is kind of a combination of the two of being distinguished of where there were things within creation that were distinguished differently. Mankind was distinguished among the rest of creation. The covenants distinguished Israel from the rest of the known world. The, uh, you know, Israel themselves were distinguished among the rest of the world. And during the story of the Passover, why is it that they had to put the blood on the doorposts? Because they would pass it. Ghost, the Holy Ghost would basically pass over those right. houses. Yeah. They would see the see the blood. And they would know this is somebody that is a servant of Yahweh in this house we pass over. Mm -hmm. It distinguished them from the Egyptians. The Egyptians, if they had put blood on the door, would have been saved. They didn't do that. The Israelite, if an Israelite did not put was not in a home with blood on the door, they would not be spared. Because the blood is what distinguished who died and who did not. Now, in the New Testament, there's only two real, there's a bunch of different words, but most of them all are wrapped around these two. Aphorizo is to mark off by boundaries. And that is what we normally refer to when we talk about being set apart. Mm. And then diastello is also to set apart, but it's to distinguish or charge expressly. So really, when we're talking about these these two words, if we had to decide which one was which, aphorizo is more of a separation. We are putting boundaries up. We're dividing up the field. This diastello is literally to distinguish this person from this person and to give a specific charge to them. So in 2 Timothy 4, when Paul says, I charge you with, this is what he's doing is this diastello of you are now going to preach the word, whether it's convenient or not, you're going to go and you are going to fulfill your ministry. You are going, all of these different things is a specific charge to Timothy to be different from the rest by doing this. So now with that kind of a breakup and breakdown within scripture, which one is actually correct, Brandon? <laughs> well, I feel like we have both definitions, in my opinion, again, of Diatalo. Uh, which one? Uh, Diastello, yeah. Diastello, thank you. Feels like more of the set apart <clears throat> side where there is... Um, Again, more of that distinct calling or, or purpose given to said person or thing. Um, and then the other one starts with an A. Aphorizo. Aphorizo. Thank you. I 
may or may not get those. Um, it's okay. It's a different language. Yes. With, with the dividing there, I typically think of that's when you're separating something. So if you're separating cattle or fruits, like you're putting something in place um, or you're creating that said divide um, w- within something or a group. So that that's part of the issue is that we have both both examples. <laughs> and really, when we look through the places where all of these different words are used, you you can argue if we are just going off of definitions that they're the same thing or that the call is to be both. But if we actually start breaking down the calls from from God, both in the Old Testament and the New Testament, we're going to find something completely different. And that's what we're going to start walking through after the break. We'll be right back. Season two of the Ministry Misfits podcast and our awesome theme song are brought to you by Laird Creative Agency. In our social media world, the next connection is always one click or scroll away and your business has to be ready when they find you. That's why Laird Creative is always looking for ways to step your brand up. Whether you're looking to overhaul your brand one time with a new website or want to save money by outsourcing your graphic and media content, Laird Creative Agency is here to help. Laird Creative's mission is to take the difficulty out of the creative process. With Laird Creative, you'll find a dedicated team of artists ready to tackle any creative need that your business has, big or small. If you're looking for an easier way to share the vision of your organization through thoughtful branding and creative content, find them at LairdCreativeAgency.com to get started. Mention the Ministry Misfits podcast and get a free consultation call. Laird Creative, step your brand up. We're back. Welcome back, everyone. Andrew and I are here today talking about, are we called to be set apart? Are we called to be separate? Or did we just confuse everybody? I was going to say, I thought you were going to say we're talking about. We don't really know what we're talking about because I haven't given the actual answer yet. <laughs> <laughs> that is true, too. So all of you still waiting for your poll questions to be answered. Yes, we're we're getting there. We are, because it's important to actually this to determine why we say what we are. Because this this really lays into two weeks ago when we did Halloween is where this question has come up a lot. Well, we're just supposed to be separate from everything else. So avoid all appearance of evil and just go walk away from anything related to Halloween. This also is a big piece to the Christian nationalism stuff of we are supposed to be a full nation. And we are supposed to be a light to the world as a nation. And so it's about a nation that is set apart rather than not necessarily separate from everything else. But we are supposed to be separate from the world because we are the light of the world. All of these different things are very important to have an actual answer for. And so we're going to start walking through back through we we kind of gave basic definitions of what we actually mean when we say these words so when we talk about being separate talking about you take something out you create something new it's completely different all everything is completely separate from everything else to be set apart is to take something out designate it as something new and then put it back and so either in the covid era (laughs) You take something out, you designate it as something new, and then it spreads to everybody else real quick. (laughs) Or it's you take something out, you designate it as something new, you put it back, and so now it stands out among everything else. So there's a couple of different things that happen with this idea when we talk about being set apart. So now we're going to start walking through the Old Testament and the New Testament related to these different things. In the Old Testament, you have 
a couple of different examples of both of these words. Like we said, within the Hebrew, you've got you've got kadash, which is to be consecrated, set apart, made holy. You've got badal, which is to separate like the light in the dark, the law from the non-law. And then you've got pala, which is distinguishing among creation and the covenants and the people. In the same way, you've got different examples of being separated out and set apart, even among these different groups that are already separated and set apart. Within Israel, the Levites were separate from the rest of the tribes. They were set apart to be the ones to be the, the intercessors between God and the people. They were different than the rest of Israel, but they were still Israelites. So they were both separate and set apart. You also have things like the Nazarites. Who is the famous Nazarite? Strong man. Oh, Samson. There you go. Now, the <laughs> other part of this is, was Samson actually a good Nazarite? No. No, he was a bad Nazarite. <laughs> but he was a Nazarite. But the Nazarites were to set themselves apart from the rest of the people. They didn't drink. They didn't cut their hair. They didn't touch dead things, although nobody was supposed to touch dead things, but it was even worse for them. You know, all of those sort of things, they were set apart from the rest of the people. The prophets were called out separate from the rest of the people. Samuel was completely different from Eli, even though they they were, you know, Samuel was being raised by Eli. He was set apart and called differently than Eli or his sons. We have all these different examples, but the one that we're going to focus in on is actually just Israel in general for today. So, Brandon, what was Israel's actual call to be in the world? Not set apart or separate, just in general. What was what was the purpose of God calling out Israel as his chosen people? Well, I guess probably take a step back from that it would be the covenant that God made with with Abraham. Yes. Which we talked about the promises versus covenants before and a few episodes ago. And so with that, the covenant is really that um, binding contract. And what was the actual goal of Israel? There's, there's a couple of them. One of them is that Israel was, you know, Abraham's seed was going to be the one that the Messiah comes from. Mm -hmm. That's not necessarily what we're talking about this time. Why, why did God choose Israel to be, why did he even choose a chosen people? They were supposed to be what to the land? A light? Salt and light, right? They are supposed to show the pagan world around them who God is and what God can do. This is why they have to go into slavery and be rescued out. It's so that people would see that this people was special. They were, they went in as slave or they were there as slaves and then came out with all the riches of Egypt and they didn't even have an army to do it. And then they route the Holy land. After wandering around the desert for 40 years, they don't have a professional army. And in most of the battles, they don't even have to necessarily fight. That set them apart from the rest of the nations. They were a monotheistic tri you know, group of tribes. They only had one God. Now, do you think some would argue that they were separated from Egypt? Well, that... They're separate from Egypt because of the fact that they literally left. Left, Egypt. yes, exactly. <laughs> because know, there's, there's also there was some water in between and, them. And that that's was what, yeah, I think that's why some people are like, "Is it both?" Well, my de this is my definition because there is a physical cutoff separation of both, like ge geographically, of where they were going to, uh, and then the physical moving. And so away that's from... why that's part of what we want to talk about is. After they had taken the promised land and Israel was established as a kingdom, united, they had the law, they had their, they had their judges and their prophets, everybody was getting settled. What made them different from the Canaanites that they routed? 
Give me some examples here. There's a lot of things. It would be like the food that they ate. What they ate. What they wore. What they wore, kind of, yeah. Um, obviously, who they worshipped. Who they worshipped was a big one, yes. I'm trying to think of something else. Um, Those are the obvious ones. Sacrifices, which... The way they... Of... What were the sacrifices? The way they... Prayed? Worshipped, right? Worshipped, okay. The way they worshipped was completely different from everybody else. They weren't sacrificing children. They were sacrificing lambs and goats. They weren't. They weren't having sex on the altar. They were praying at the altar. They had a priest that went straight to God that was very specific about the cleanliness of how they had to approach rather than just cutting themselves all over the place. The worship practices were completely different from the rest of the world. The way that they had sex was completely different. Circumcision changes everything because now even the way they have sex is consecrated to God. God has told them what they could do and what they could not. And it was a reminder of that. The way that they governed was supposed to be completely different. They were never supposed to have a king. God gave them a king because they could. he was tired of their whining. Yeah, they kept asking for one. You know, they just kept whining about it. Everybody else has one. We should have one too. And so God says, okay, but even when they have their king, the king is supposed to be completely different because it was not the richest guy. It was not the most good looking guy. It was not this, this, or this. God chose the one that had the heart that would lead through the power of the spirit. Basically, they were picking another prophet, just this guy was not going to have the prophetic gifts. He was going to be a leader, but a leader that relied on God for his strength. Mm -hmm. Saul failed. David failed a few times throughout. Solomon failed half the time. And then we just completely lost control after Solomon. Right? I mean, yep. that's basic, yep. <laughs> basic history here's right your, there. Here's your king that you wanted. Yeah. Good luck. Even the way that they the the law governed things was completely different. This is one of the the questions that comes up when people trying to badmouth the Bible or badmouth people trying to claim the Bible preaches justice. It's like, well, in the Old Testament, you have slavery, and so God condones slavery. Mm -hmm. God does not ever condone slavery in the Bible. God gives them the guidelines for if you are going to do this then this is how you are going to do it. And so what the guidelines were, were you are not going to ever enslave another Israelite. If you have to take him as a slave to pay off a debt, you only get him for seven years. Mm -hmm. If you take a slave from another land and you as so much as hit him, he goes free with some of your stuff. You know, if he breaks a tooth while working, he goes free. It was all about a representation of what God had done for the people of Israel who brought them out of slavery. Mm -hmm. That was a big piece of who they were. They were redeemed from oppression. And so they were not to oppress. Granted, it's not likely that that was followed very closely. Yeah. But... That was what was set up. That was what was given to them to do. They also, the way that they interacted with each other was different than the rest of the world. They were to share the stories, but not just share the stories in a legend form. They were to share the stories to remind them that we were once oppressed in Egypt and look at what God has done. Would that be more the cornerstones? Well, cornerstones just stories in general, right? The entire Old Testament is the story of what God did in Israel. So why does that actually matter? What What is the difference here? Are they set apart? Are they separate with all of these different things? Which do you think it is before we, we actually reveal it? I, I would say it's set apart. Why? Partially because it's as I was hinting at of like, well, could you say it's separated because there's a land divide and there were 
on their own. But again, going back to the covenant that God had with Abraham, that I think is where I think we see the difference here of God creating a set purpose for his people and providing them with different, I'll say lack of better terms, like best practices <laughs> of how to follow me. Of You don't have to live by this rule per se, but like th this is what I'm governing you to be. Um, Commissioning, right? Yes, and calling you towards. And beyond that, they weren't even separate because they were still geopolitically involved. And that's the thing that we miss when sometimes when we just read select stories out of here or we read these without any kind of historical context or research. Is that the Israelites in the Old Testament were fully connected to their neighbors. That was part of the problem was they were fully connected to their neighbors <laughs> The reason why the judges happen is because Israel forgot that they were set apart and started worshiping the gods that they were supposed to have actually fully separated themselves from, right? They were supposed to separate themselves from the evil, from the pagan gods because they were set apart by the one true God. Yeah. And I think you bring up a good point where if you're in your own little group doing your thing over here, it's easy to be set apart because everybody's like minded. Right. And so you're like, well, yeah, I'm not tempted to go it's do this over chamber. here. Yeah. Because we're all doing the same thing. So we're accountable and that's what we're supposed to do because we're, that's what we're accountable. The, yes. That's what they're doing around right. me. Whereas if you're intermingled, you see that, oh, that looks better than what I'm doing. Or why are they doing that? Why do I have to do what I'm doing? Why do they get a king and we don't? Exactly. That's the whole reason we ended up with Saul is because the people saw everybody else around them and said, we want to look like them because we look different. We eat different. Our stories are different. The way that we consecrate our children is different. The way that we celebrate our, our festivals is different. Our calendar is completely different from everybody else. It's still completely different from everybody else. Now, you know, 6,000 years later. All of these things made them different, and re but that difference made them want to feel normal because they were not separated out. They were set apart among the other nations. Now, moving from them into the New Testament, what is the call of the church supposed to be? We are told to be holy. Salt and light, yeah. right? Yeah. Once again, we're back to salt and light. Holy is correct, but we're called, the church itself <laughs> yeah, is Yeah, I guess it's is, probably simpler terms. Right. We're supposed to be salt and light to the world. This is Matthew 5 through 7. This is John 13. This is Galatians 6. This is 1 Corinthians 12 through 14. All of it, we are to be salt and light in the world. We have a story of redemption, just like the Israelites did. And then we've been given a specific way to live, loving others. And we've been given a certain way to worship, which is loving God. Right? Love mm -hmm. God, love people, salt and light. Yeah. That's what the church is called to be. This is almost the same as what we saw within Israel, right? Israel was salt and light. Genesis 12, Genesis 15, Genesis 17, Exodus 20, the entire law. Isaiah 49 all told Israel to be salt and light in their world. They were a light to the nations. The call of Abram was that all the nations would be blessed through him. The church then is told to be salt and light and to bless the world because we have the promise that Abraham was promised. Jesus was the promise and we have that. And so we are supposed to bless the world by spreading that message, that story of redemption. So then if that's the case, what is the actual call of the church? Are we separate or set apart? Okay, I was like, is, 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 uh, it's the same to, question, but did, it's a different know way. That, yeah. Right. Yeah, to be set apart. We are called to be set apart, not to be separate from the rest of the world. Mm-hmm. 
Because if we're separate from the rest of the world, how do we do any of the things that we were actually commanded to do? Yeah. How do we look different? How do you go into all the world if you're supposed if to be separate not... from them? Mm -hmm. How do you love your enemies if you're separate from your enemies? You know, the loving others can still happen because we can do that in community. But we can't love our enemies if we are completely separated out from them. And I, if we look at it too with Jesus of how he spoke, even with some of his parables. Right. Of like, these are specific stories that most likely only believers are going to truly understand or comprehend the deeper meaning in it. Others might just see a story of father, son, whatever. Um, but just to see the true root and meaning of what Jesus was trying to convey and where the faith comes into that. I think well, I mean, Matthew 25, the parable of the talents is the, the guy that gets in trouble is in trouble for literally burying his stuff. So nobody can touch it. Yeah. And bringing it back. As... That, that's what he got in trouble for was not putting it out there into the world. Yeah. You know, it, the the reason that we try that we complicate all of this stuff is because of the fact that we don't fully understand what it means to be set apart as a Christian. You know, we can we we obviously have talked in length multiple other times on the problem with separation. This is the fear mongering Cold War theology stuff, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's literally what it all is about is if we are a part of them, we become like them. And to be fair, that's what we saw happen with Israel. Yeah. And I think pride also kicks in too is the the more you're separated, the more it becomes of I am better than Yes. Said it's an person. us and them yes. mentality at that point, which an us and them mentality always creates this sense of battle. But the battle is not between flesh and blood. The battle is spiritual. Mm -hmm. It's good and evil. It's God versus everything that is anti-God. It doesn't matter if we're separate or set apart when it comes to that battle. It's going to happen anyway. Now, what does it actually mean then to be set apart as a Christian, Brandon? Well, as we, as you already said, it's like the loving God and loving others. And the great commandments, right? Yes. Matthew 20, that's Matthew 22. The great commandments is the, is one piece of this. Yes. And so part of that will extend fruits of the spirit. And that's, that's a, what? The fruits of the spirit do what? What do you think that is? Based off of the definitions we gave earlier. The fruits of the spirit is the distinguisher, right? It's the distinguishing mark. Yes. But I, as w I think we've talked about before, I feel like for the, the person themselves, it's harder for them to see right. the fruit, but hopeful, which is probably a good thing. But others... Because we're back to the pride issue at that point. Yes. <laughs> yes. Others should be seeing your fruit and not just, this isn't a, a talents thing or a set apart of, all right, Andrew, only you get peace and Brandon doesn't. <laughs> we're, we're called the whole... <laughs> there, there may be times when you think that's the case when you come into the studio. <laughs> True. But, but we're called to all of the fruits as Christians. Um, and it gives each of us, a, I'll say, a different purpose, too, of one, we are provide as Christians and believers, we're given hope of, of a new world and eternal life that, that Christ gives us. Um, so I think we have that new hope restored within us that we're longing to be reunited again with Christ. Well, and you, you used a good word with purpose, but you know, the biblical word that normally gets thrown around with that, as far as we're not given purpose, we are given our commission, right? Yeah. The great commission or calling or calling. We are told to go into all the world and make disciples, baptizing them, teaching them, right? That that's what we have been commissioned to do. So we've got our call to go into all the world. We have how we're supposed to do it. We are supposed to do it by loving God and loving others. And then we have our distinguishing marks, the fruits of the spirit. You know, John 13 talks about the fact that love is the distinguishing mark. This is how the world will know you are my disciples. Mm -hmm. Paul in first in Romans 12 tells us about the gifts 
as far as these are things that God has given you to do the work. First Corinthians 12 is the gifts and the, the, the different things. Ephesians 6 is, is the different levels and different the different places that you see this. Or Ephesians 5 and 6, both. You've got, you know, in Galatians 5, you got the fruits of the Spirit. First Corinthians 13, again, it's all about love being the factor. First Corinthians 14, as far as these are the hierarchy of our gifts, but yet love is still the, the intertangling of all of it. Hmm. We've got all of these different things that separate us out from the rest of the world. We are called with a purpose. We are gifted to fulfill that purpose. And in doing so, we change the world through loving others and showing them the love of God. Mm hmm. That's what it means to be set apart. And you know, the other word that gets thrown around with this idea of set apart is this idea of being made holy, the Kadosh level of this. And we see that among the call of the church as well. Yeah, and from and from that, which we'll talk about here in First Peter, of okay, why are we called to be set apart? Well, that's because Christ was of with being blameless without sin of being holy and set apart like that's what we strive towards even though we we lack that um in in the sin side of being made new but as we see partially in first peter one towards the beginning of pretty much the entire book of first peter yeah. tells you to just be holy and stop being stupid yeah i guess I'll, the ones i'll break <laughs> into is starting in verse 13 Therefore, preparing your minds for action and being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance. But as he who called you is holy, you are also holy in your conduct. Since it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. So really that last part is the big thing. You shall be holy, for I am holy. And so how do we actually get to that point? That's the question then. Mm -hmm. How do we actually become holy? Well, to really give the answer, we won't fully become holy until we're reunited with Christ again. Right. There is that level of it. <laughs> but it's the same thing that we see when we talk about Israel, right? They were set apart to be holy. And to be holy... What does God tell them in Micah chapter 6? He's already told you what to do. To love justice, to seek mercy, and to walk humbly with God. That's all we have to do. So now we are going to take one more break. And then when we come back, we're going to actually look at what this holiness actually looks like. And also answer a couple of your guys' arguments about why you think it should actually be separate. We'll be right back. Today is a great day to start your own podcast. Whether you're looking for a new marketing channel, have a message you want to share with the world, or just think it would be fun to have your own talk show, Podcasting is an easy, inexpensive, and fun way to expand your online reach. Buzzsprout is hands down the easiest and best way to launch, promote, and track your podcast. Your show can be online and listed on all major platforms within minutes of finishing your first recording. We just switched to Buzzsprout for Season 2 and have immediately noticed the difference. With Buzzsprout, you get a great-looking podcast website, audio players that you can drop into your websites, detailed analytics to see how people are listening, tools to promote your episodes, and more. Podcasting isn't hard when you have the right partners, and Buzzsprout and the Misfits want to help you get started. Contact us for a free consultation call, and then visit our affiliate link to get started with Buzzsprout. Using this link not only helps support the Misfits, but it also gets you a $20 Amazon gift card. The teams at Buzzsprout and Ministry Misfits are passionate about helping you succeed. Join over 100,000 podcasters already using Buzzsprout to get their message out to the world. To find out more, go to www.ministrymisfits.com backslash affiliates.
We're back. All right, welcome back. We are still here and talking about all of the different fun stuff that I confused everybody with on social media this week. So we answered the question of the fact that set apart is the actual call. Yes, that's that's the answer that yes. So ding ding we were ding. looking for. We have our answer. That is what we are actually called to be. And now we've started talking through why that is the case. And so we said that it's because the church is called to go out to the world, to preach the gospel, to make disciples, to baptize, to do all that stuff. And we do that through love of God, love of people, and that we are set apart through the love of Christ and through the fruits of the spirit Mm -hmm. and all of our gifts and everything else. So the spirit is the distinguisher between us and the rest of the world. Now though, before we went to break, we asked, you started talking to us through first Peter about what it means to be holy and that the call is to be holy, which is another part of the Hebrew word for set apart, which is Kadash to be consecrated. And so we ask the question of how do we become holy and what does any of this actually have to do with this idea of the great commandment, great commission and the distinguishing marks. So you had walked us through the fact that the call is to be holy because Christ is holy. Mm -hmm. We know that we can be holy because of the fact that that's if Christ has told us to be holy, he's going to give us a way to do it. Mm-hmm. And so we know how to become holy is, one, we trust in him because blood is what cleanses us. And then we also know what is required of us. If we go back to the Old Testament, Micah chapter 6, which is he's told you what is good to seek justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with God, which is the same thing that Jesus tells us, to love our neighbor and love God. Loving our neighbor is seeking justice and loving mercy, and walking humbly with God is a part of loving God. But this is where we get to where pride can start to come in and switch set apart to separate. Mm -hmm. Because if we are holy, doesn't that make us better? That's what some people would like to think. And people do did think this because this is what we see in the second chapter of First Peter and specifically in verse 9 because Peter says, You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his possession so that you may proclaim the praises of the one who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That's very similar to what we said we had within Israel as well, right? They were a chosen race. God chose them out. They were the royal priesthood. They were the ones telling the world about who God is. They were a literal holy nation. They were a people that was God's prized possession. That is who they were. That they were set apart in that manner. And we saw what happened in Israel. Because pride set in quite a lot. Mm -hmm. And it caused them to get off track. And that's because they forgot about this other part of this. of So that you may proclaim the praises of the one who called you out of darkness into his light. That's the story of redemption. Israel was called out of Egypt. We are called out of our sin from darkness into light. That's what it means to be holy is to be in the light now. So, Brandon, what is the key to staying set apart and not puffing ourselves up in this manner? Part of it is the community of believers, I think, that you create from being set apart where you do have that community to hold you accountable and as we talked about before, of how will they know you're Christians? By your love. And so if you can't love within your own circle, like that's like it's almost you, you crumble from the inside. Right. <laughs> in a way where, 
okay, we, we can't love each other. But what and, happens then when the community loses focus? Because now we are into the Christian nationalism discussion. Because what does Peter say? We're a holy nation. We're called out as a nation to be holy. So what happens then when the community around, uh, around us is what has been filled with the pride of holiness? We see sin even more start to take root. Um, yeah, and just other individuals take take the place of God or we play, put other items in place of God. So we've got idolatry. Idol, yes, as idols is... Yeah, what I, what I was getting. So, how of. do we counter it? I guess is the real question. Then, how do we counter that? What do you think is the way that we are supposed to counter this sort of idea? It's just that day. The the tougher answer is it's the daily sacrifice to yes. our of ourselves of um how how do we take that purpose that God has given us to to put that on daily to love God and love others, even when it's not in our best interest. A lot of times you're, you're, you are just, you're just missing the one word. <laughs> All right. Give me the word that you're looking for here. What is the call in Micah six? We seek justice. We love mercy. And we walk humbly. We walk humbly with God. Humility is the key. That's what dying to self is. That's what you were a hundred percent correct. <laughs> Just not given the word you want. But the <laughs> word, the word that we need is humility, mm -hmm. because of the fact that what's it say here in First Peter two? Also, the whole goal is that we proclaim the praises of the one who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. We didn't do anything. God is the one that did all of it. So we have no reason to boast. That's Paul, That's Paul, not Peter, but that's literally what the, the scripture says. We have no reason to boast because we didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. What distinguishes us as set apart is not us. It's the spirit. It's the gifts of the spirit. It's the fruits of the spirit. It's the spirit cleansing us and making us holy. We didn't do anything. So there is no reason to boast. Yes, Christians are a chosen race. That is out of scripture. We are the holy chosen race. But that holy chosen race, first off, is determined not by blood, but by the blood of Christ. It's the blood that is on us, not in us, that makes us a chosen race. And second of all, it's a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation that is set apart in love and humility not in power and dominance. That's a whole line right there. It's, it's, a, it's a completely different idea than this idea of we must be a separate, holy, untouched, clean people. The Levites were the only people in Israel that were called to that. And that's because they were literally working in God's presence 24-7. The rest of the people of Israel were called to be a chosen holy race a light to the people proclaiming the praises of the one that brought them from slavery to freedom. And they didn't do that because of the fact that the pride had set in over and over. And they thought we could do this without having to remember where we came from. And so they went off to Baal. They went off to Asherah. They went to the places that they thought they could get power. Hezekiah thinks that he knows what he's doing. So he brings the Babylonian emissaries into the temple to see not the glory of God, but to see the glory of Israel, of Judah, and they get carted off because of it. Because when humility is not in the mix, we lose the aspect of set of being Kadash, holy, consecrated, set apart. And we fall into the need the feeling of needing to be separate this is probably i don't think i've heard this before but you would probably call we would call the trinity the three deities set apart they're set apart from the rest of creation yes yes 
they're not separate from creation. Correct. That what would make them separate from creation would be deism. Right? There's mm-hmm. a God, he created stuff and then he left. <laughs> you know, the 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 watchmaker God. He makes the watch, he sets it going, and then he just hands it off. And mm-hmm. occasionally he comes down to fix it. You know, that is what that is not what we see in scripture. Instead, we see a God that is set apart. He is incarnational. God comes to us as us to save us. But with that, each, each of the three having a specific purpose. Right. They're set apart one. among each other. They're not separate. Correct. Yes. Yep. Yes. It's a little bit different. But yeah, it's the same idea. Yeah, that, that of, was probably more of a stretch. But it They was, are it distinguished was... among each other. Mm-hmm. Right. We are able to distinguish the Father and the Son and the Spirit. I mean, even here, that's what we've got, is that the Spirit specifically is the one that marks us. And he marks us because of our commitment to the Son. And because of our commitment to the Son, we worship the Father. All three are there. They're not separate, but they are distinguished among each other because all three are worshipped and holy and and we, we bow at the feet regardless. Mm-hmm. But the differences are clear and their purposes are clear and the callings that they give on us are clear. Now, we do need to address a couple of the comments that we got as far as people that the people that were voting for separate. We got a few different uh, two different verses that were used. One of these is Second Corinthians Verses, verse, or chapter 6, verse 17, which says this. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch unclean things, and I will welcome you. That's pretty straightforward. Mm-hmm. So why then, Brandon, are we saying that we are to, if Second Corinthians six seventeen says be separate, this is what the Lord says, why are we saying that we are to be set apart, not separate? What's the problem with just using this verse? Um, I'm trying to read through here again. As like I said, my computer being being in the plane plane mode. Yeah, his computer apparently went <laughs> on a trip without him. Part of what I'm seeing in sec Second Corinthians six seventeen is that staying away of almost abstaining from unclean things. So. I, I've, I've you've probably heard this college example too, where there'd be kids who are like, I'm going to go to a party because Jesus hung out with the sinners. Right. And so, but it's like, yeah, but you're just going to drink and do all these other things. So you're, it's what we just talked about, right? Yeah. Or you're called to be holy because Jesus was holy. We're not called to go be a drunkard because some of Jesus friends were drunks. Mm-hmm. That's not the call. So that is one big part of it is the context here is what we are separating from is not the world. We're separating from sin, Mm -hmm. right? Yes. And the reason we know that that's what we're separating from is that what Paul is actually doing here is he is quoting Isaiah 52 and specifically verse 11, which says, if I can see it, leave, leave, go out from there. Don't touch anything unclean. Go out from her. Purify yourselves, you who carry the vessels of the Lord. Isaiah was prophesying Cyrus and prophesying that the exiles would leave Babylon. They were to separate themselves from Babylon. They were no longer captors. or ca- They weren't captors. They were captives. captives. Let's try that. <laughs> they were no longer captives. They, they were to leave the pagan captivity and go back to service of God. And so in order to do that, they had to separate themselves and purify themselves. They can't go before the Lord unless they are holy. And to be holy, they had to be completely separate from the evil among them. But with us, as believers, we already said, what is it that actually makes us holy? The blood of Christ. The blood of Christ is what makes us holy. We don't do anything. Now, we can still flee from sin 
and avoid temptation and avoid all of these different things. That's a part of being holy because Christ says to be holy. That's a part of loving God and loving others is to not compromise ourselves. But the Spirit is the one that helps us do that as well. Conviction, giftings in some cases, the fruits of the Spirit, self-control is one of the fruits of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. It's not saying go build your fort and and get ready for the apocalypse. <laughs> That's not the call. The um, call unless you're Noah. Yeah, and right, Noah was but Noah but, yes, was, was given... set apart, not separate, because Noah regularly regularly, if I could talk, was warning the people around him to join him on the ark. The people separated themselves from Noah. Noah did not separate themselves from him. You know, this is part of the conversation that we've we've had before, or well, I've had before, when people are complaining about us, saying that we are just out here bashing evangelicalism and that we don't care about the church. We are evangelical. We care about the church. That's why we do this. Mm -hmm. But the reason that people think that me specifically is not evangelical is not because I have separated myself from evangelicalism. Evangelicalism separated themselves from me. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why we are the misfits is because we were told we do not fit their model. Mm -hmm. And so we have been pushed off. Yeah, not not Christ. The mama. call is what set us apart. And sometimes that being set apart causes people to separate themselves from that. And normally, especially in the case of the world and Christians, what causes them to, what should cause them, should cause them to want to separate themselves off would be because they don't want the conviction. But unfortunately, what more often is happening today here in the U.S. is what's causing them to want to separate themselves is because of the fact that we have forgotten about the humility aspect again. Mm -hmm. And the power and control and the set-apartness, the uniqueness of us has become more important than what we've actually been set apart to do. Now, the other verse that was thrown around as reasons why it's separate is Romans chapter 12 and specifically verse two, Brandon, any guesses as to what it says before it pulls up on your phone? Uh, I've already got this oh, one never mind. Yeah. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing, you may discern, discern what is the will of God, what is good, acceptable and perfect. Don't be conformed to the world. Mm -hmm. Separate yourselves off. Yeah, don't, that's be, a, what don't these, be a part of it. But that's not what it says at all. Nowhere in here is there any indication that the goal is separation. Because what it says is, don't be conformed, be transformed. And again, who does the transforming? God. The Spirit is the one that does all of this. Mm -hmm. We don't do anything. And the reason that we do it is so that we can discern the good, pleasing, perfect will of God. Discerning of the will of God is discerning the call of God on our lives to do the things that he has set us apart to do. This verse is actually talking about what it means to be set apart and has nothing to do with separating ourselves off from the rest of the world. Yeah. And like you said, most of it from the world is that coming from the sin, the spiritual right. battle. Side. We are Paul regularly regularly tells us to run from sin and run from temptation, to separate ourselves off from that, to have no no appearance of evil. That is completely different than saying we have to separate ourselves off from the people of the world. Because part of what we see from Peter, you know, this is, some, I don't remember who it was I heard pre preaching through Peter, but it was talking about the fact that, you know, they, they find it very interesting that the first actual writing that Peter does that we have matches the first solo mission that Peter has. 
Because what's the first thing that the the vision that Peter gets before he meets Cornelius? He's sleeping, he's hungry, and God brings down this cloth from heaven full of unclean animals. Hmm. And the spirit tells him, Peter, take and eat. Peter's like, "Uh uh-uh, I'm not falling for this. (laughs) I know the law. So again, Peter, take and eat. Peter says, no. And God tells him, what I have made Kadosh is Kadosh. Mm. And now it was all a representation of what was about to happen. And Peter understood that because as soon as the Gentiles showed up at Peter's door, Peter went with them. He got the message. For one of the first times in the the (laughs) history of the the story of Peter that we have from the Gospels and Acts, Peter got it right on the first, well, Uh, he got it on the first try, even though then we find out that he then was part of the Judaizers party. Poor Peter. (laughs) That's a whole nother story. But the idea was original Peter's, Peter's message that he got was what God has made holy is holy. Mm -hmm. There is no changing it back because God is the one that has done it. And so now in first Peter, what does Peter tell us? Be holy because God is holy. And we even know how God makes us holy is God is the one that makes us holy. Mm Mm-hmm. And so it's not about separating ourselves and isolating ourselves, locking those church doors so the wrong people don't come in, sending our kids off to private school with the sole purpose of we don't want them interacting with the world. Again, we've already covered private school versus public school. That's a whole nother discussion. I was going to say the issue that, that... there is your reasoning behind it of we don't want them interacting with the world, which unfortunately I know people that that is the case. Yeah. That, that's the one that was in the back of my mind of like, do we bring that up? And even just, we always bring that yeah, up. Come on, Brandon. With the, some schools or even probably organizations of the signing of proclamation of faith. Right. Which can get tricky because there's a step, purpose of unity through the body of Christ that they're trying to accomplish um, and create that unity. But also, yeah, how, how are we still being <laughs> within the world? So that, right. that's the whole it's, complicated. It, it's complicated if we are not remembering what we've talked about this entire however long we've been going. Because the entire time we've been talking and going through, we've been saying that the spirit is the one that determines all of these things. We just read, we discern the will of God. We can have these discussions or anything like that. Again, the issue comes in of why are we doing these things? If we are sending our kids off to private school, Christian school, because that is a better option for them. It's better education. It is a Christian education. They're going to have godly leaders in front of them, all these other things. That's great. But if you're just sending them there because you don't want them to look like the kids at the public schools, now we have a little bit of a different problem. Mm -hmm. Now, again, nuance. We know that in some cases there are reasons to have to do that. Yeah. But even there, your reasoning for sending them to that school is not to separate themselves. It's to set them apart. Because if they have an issue where in an environment, they are going to fall to peer pressure regularly. Shout out again back to Israel in the Old Testament. They, everybody else has a king. Why don't I have one? Sending them to a place that is avoiding temptation Mm -hmm. is different than saying, if I send my kid, if we send our kids to public school, they're all going to become transgender and we don't want that, which is an argument, unfortunately, I've seen three times this week. Mm -hmm. That is not the call of a believer. The call of the believer is to be set apart through the great commandments, the great commission, and the works of the spirit within us that show people we are disciples by our love, our joy, our peace, our patience, our kindness, our goodness, our faithfulness in our self-control, in our humility, in all of it. So if you still disagree with us, 
feel free to let us know. We're not separating ourselves from the from the <laughs> haters. So let us know what you think. Again, you can do that in a couple of ways. Um, the easiest way is if you're watching the video on Facebook or on our new YouTube setup, which yeah. I'm still working on at the moment. So it may not look completely new to you yet, but it is. You know, if you want to comment, comment on the Just videos. Comment on uh, below. Yeah. Comment below. If you're listening on Good Pods, you can comment right there as well. There's a whole nice feature there as well. You can also um, let us know through social media. We're on everything as at Ministry Misfit. You know, all of that good stuff. We're all out there. Let us know what you think. Let us know why you still think that it's separate, even though you, there was only like 10% of, 2% of you thought that. So I don't think we're going to get that much pushback. <laughs> so the other percent was, yeah. now I'm confused. Now I'm confused. and um they're the same thing mm. are the ones. So if you still think it's the same thing, let us know why you think it's the same thing. But we just showed you that they're completely different goals. They're separate. They're separate. Now, um, the other, Oh, what was your, th- Oh, it is November. Yeah. So giving Tuesday. Yes. Giving Tuesday is coming up. 29th. Oh, your calendar works. Even uh, yeah, while it's on vacation. The, yeah. It's on airplane mode, but calendar still works. So All right. Tuesday, November 29th, um, after Thanksgiving here in the States. So, yeah, Tuesday, November 29th is Giving Tuesday, but for the entire month of November, any new Patreon, so go to patreon.com backslash Ministry Misfits, and you can join Patreon at any of the four different levels. Any of any new Patreon um, subscribers, patrons, I think is what they're called, um, all of that, the money is going to Tikva for the month of November. We still have the Cash App up also, which I think is dollar sign Ministry Misfit. Maybe it's Ministry Misfits, so. one of those two. Um, any donations coming in through there are going to Tikva as well. You also, if you go to ministrymisfits.com and go to the shop tab, don't click on it. But if you go to the shop tab, you can go to the, the merch store. But there's also a tab there for Tikva fundraising as well, where you can see any of the items in our store that the money will go to Tikva if you purchase. So... Brandon, I think it's time for us to set to separate ourselves. That's right. And, You're and just waiting off. for that. For I was that trying pot. to figure out a way. We've been we've been commissioned by Systemic Ecology to go do some other work for them <laughs> later today. So in the meantime, but we will be back together to watch. Yes, uh, we will be coming back together to 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 do our our other job that we've been tasked with. Um, in the meantime, we will see the rest of you next week. The Ministry Misfits podcast is a production of Ministry Misfit Media in association with Overwhelming Victory. Dr. Greg Linville and Andrew Fouts are our executive producers, and Brandon Simmons is associate producer. The Ministry Misfits theme song is written and produced by J.D. Laird and Laird Creative Agency. If you would like to get in touch with us, you can email us at ministrymisfitmedia at gmail.com or by following at Ministry Misfit on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. You can also visit our website at www.ministrymisfits.com or through bio.link backslash Ministry Misfits. If you would like to support Ministry Misfits, you can become a patron by going to patreon.com backslash Ministry Misfits. 